new podcast. Yeah, man. Yeah. First, first of many, man. Yeah, man. So the podcast, um, I've decided to name Pragmatic Filmmaking, mm -hmm. which um, is more about It's more about the philosophical aspects of creativity, filmmaking, etc. As you know, me and you've been friends for years, fellow yeah. filmmakers. We've worked together, so um, I think we've gathered enough experience to just give our take to the whole industry. I guess. Yeah. You know good, I mean? good, bad, and the ugly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Exactly. <laughs> so. Um, New Year, 2023. Yeah. Um, so um, it'd be interesting to do a recap on the the gear you invested in last year, um, and more or less what you've what you've liked about it, what's worked, what hasn't worked, etc. Okay. So um, yeah. So you know, I've I've always been a Panasonic. Like when we're shooting together, it's always Panasonic, and then. Um, I started having the issue with more like with the autofocus issue because I was doing a lot more moving stuff like filming cars, um, in people, in crowds and stuff like that. And I was always using the gimbal a lot. So I thought, let me do the jump to the sonar. And I remember you cussing me out being like, boy, you're going to get cold feet, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Went, <laughs> and went I, did, dark, I did a little bit. Dark side. Yeah, 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 you know what? I ain't going to lie, but I did a little bit because obviously from using the system for so many years and then and then jump into a whole whole different complete system. It, it was a big thing because I had to sell all my Panasonic kit to get that. But yeah, jump into the Sony, you know what? I, I wouldn't go back. The only thing I do miss about the Panasonic is the menus. So easy to use and everything. But um, yeah, Sony need to sort that out, man. Because yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm still learning it now. Well, it's, that, it's that, that's what it is. It's just... Um, I don't, I, Things like that aren't probably an issue. It's just like you're just not used to it. Yeah, like, yeah. We were Panasonic shooters for years. Yeah. You sold me out. Caught, oh I, man, I caught, you, you go caught, and hit me like that. I caught, I caught, I caught, I caught a bit of your couple of your bits, <laughs> which kind of works out for me. But um, I, 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 I do kind of get your um, your requirements. Do you know what I mean? And especially like as solo filmmakers as well. Yeah. And I yeah. mean, I, I, I think because. Personally, I started off like when I started to take filmmaking seriously, I went with the Panasonic and I um, I kind of I've kind of been lucky enough over the years to be able to work and, and, and acquire decent gear. And one of the first things I purchased based on what a lot of YouTubers were speaking about was a Metabone Speed Booster. Right. But that fried my lens. Um, yeah, I remember you telling me yeah, about that. Yeah, that fried my lens. So that, that put me off. So um, I think there was a guy on the, on one of the forums who was selling a Voigtlander right. um, for cheap. Um, I drove, because um, we're in the Midlands, drove to London, met him outside. It looked like a dodgy drug deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, I got the Voigtlander then, it was 25 mil, 0.9.5. Yeah, 9 .5. yeah. yeah. And um, all of the, so I've always been a manual, you know I mean, I, I started my first documentaries yeah. with, with all, all manual lenses. So I sort of got used to um, manual filming. So um, yeah, got a collection that collected the Voigtlander kit. But um, I think going from what you're saying in relation to autofocus, I got into filmmaking quite late in life. So um, my eyes, your eyes don't get better with age. No, you no. You know what I mean? No, so that's where the autofocus is needed, but yeah, trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, So I have, I did start missing focus, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So um, I went with the, um, with the Olympus, mm. with the Olympus lenses. So I was able to, and for me, it's because of what I shoot is primarily like um, video. So, I do still do a lot of manual focusing, but the fact that I can just touch focus and it, and I know it's set. And it's there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, um, go, going back to the eye thing as well, Rob, is one thing I found out since I've been filming, you know, because you're trying to focus on such a small screen, mm. it does mess up your eyes over time. And, and, and I did notice since I've been filming, like 
your eyesight does deteriorate a little bit because you're, you're trying to focus on such a small screen all the time. And, you know, that's another, in, that's another reason why I went to autofocus as well, because, you know, health as well, mm. you know, yeah, it, yeah. in the long run, it's, it works out better. Yeah, 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 it does. Yeah, it does. And as I say, but I stuck with Panasonic and not necessarily Panasonic Micro Four Thirds. Mm. I decided to sort of like, it was a conscious decision to kind of like, just dig in really, because I knew that if I'd gone the um, the adapting way, so where I could, like I would have got EF lenses, which was yeah. the actual route I was going, I'd probably be on my fifth or sixth body yes. by now. So it kind of kept me, uh, yeah, it kind of kept that, me, because you already know yeah, me, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a first adopter, so yeah. I would have got, I, I don't know how many com camera bodies. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, had, um, and, and, and if you're going into the to the Sony world, they got that many right now, and, and not only that, how quick they're releasing the models as well. Like, um, you know, I thought I was on top of my game with the A7S three, and then you just hit me with the brand new one that they've just brought out. The, the um, a7R5, A7R5, A7R5 yeah, yeah, which yeah. I've got to say, when I first started seeing the the first videos, mm. if, if I was going to come over to Sony, that would be the that would I think would yeah. be the camera. So you you coming over to the to the dark side? Or no, what? because <laughs> I, I've, I've been because everybody's jumping over to the dark side or base or or over to full frame. Yeah, yeah. They need to get rid of their own, their old kit. So I've been able yeah. to get all the best. Yeah. Uh, micro Four Thirds lenses out there, the, um, the Leica zooms, like 1.2, yeah. I mean, 1.7 Panasonics, the Olympus Pro Primes. Yeah. And I'm getting them at, at silly money. Because, like, because of people jumping over. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. That. And, and to be fair, you know what? It, you know, it's, it is like the old saying, it's not, not what kit you use. And it's if you know how to use it well, you're going to get the same results as someone with, you know, a, a high end camera as such, you know, and because you've always stuck with the Micro Four Third system, especially with Panasonic, you know it so well. So you're gonna get the same results as someone with, I don't know, like your Reds or your Let's or you get something very close to it or very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and it, but even like, um, cause I'm shooting on two GH6s now and a GH5 Mark II and you just seen the dance I was having to do in relation to making yeah. everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If, I, if, if, if there were three Sony cameras, we'd just sit here, I'd just point them in the right direction. And, and let know, it do its yeah, thing. Yeah, let, yeah, let yeah, it do yeah, its yeah. thing. Yeah. But I'm primarily on that side of the camera. So um, it's, it, these kind of things, maybe, I mean, I, I don't know if I want to make a career out of YouTubing, but, as I say, I think we've got um, we, we, we've got something to say. So we've always got something to say because even when we have these phone conversations, we like I probably bring you up about a holiday. Then for some reason, we always slip into camera talk. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> All the exactly, time, <laughs> exactly. So, so you went to the A seven S three. S three. Yeah, you got that this year, last year, uh, last year. I got um, it. Yeah. What lenses did you get with it? So I got the twenty four to seventer. Because I thought that's, but because everything's so expensive, I had to sell all my Panasonic kit and then obviously put a bit of cash towards um, getting the A7S3 body and also the 24 to 70, which I bought second hand, which I got on a very good deal. Because um, that covers a nice range for now. And to be fair, I've not had to get any lenses up until recently where I've been sort of looking into the primes now. Um, you know, where you get a bit more shallow depth of field and it gives you a bit more flexibility. But for anyone who's thinking of jumping over to Sonair, the 24 to 70, either the G Master lens or um, like you've mentioned earlier about Sigma, their 24 to 70 is like almost, it's on par with the G Master. Um, but I don't know, maybe it's just me. I'm, I'm, I like to keep everything the same. So if I've got a Sony camera, I like to keep to Sony lenses. Mm. That's just my personal preference. Yeah, but I'm saying. but um, you know, if people are on a budget, I'd say the Sigmas are just as good. Yeah, because I I have I've looked at the because I'm always sending you shit, aren't I? Even yeah, even yeah. though I could I, I like I like 
the, the thing with me is that because I've got the the GH sixes, the cam the um the videos I like to watch for some reason are the Canon R C R five C. Is it the R5C? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Canon R five C. The right, um right. the one with the with the fan on the back. Because like how they rigged them, how they use them. Yeah. So yeah. I tend to because it's how people use their gear. Yeah. And so I don't necessarily watch that many Panasonic. Yeah. But, um, but don't you feel, feel that that's, that, that camera's a bit on the bulky side? It's bulky, but the way it's being used would be the, the way I would use the GH6. Right. Okay. Okay. You know that's I mean? why I can relate to yeah, it yeah, yeah, a bit yeah, more. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. So, um, I, I so and, and even um because I've got a, um the Panasonic BGH one as well, yeah. which I got I didn't get that last year, I got that the year before, which doesn't necessarily get used, but I watch a lot I lo I watch what the red Komodo guys are doing with theirs. Yeah. And I, I've seen some pretty good stuff with, yeah, yeah, with the yeah, red yeah, komodo. Yeah. And I try to use it in the in the I don't shoot raw. Um, but I try to use in terms of how they're how they're rigging in the in the, the way they're going about mm. um the way they're using their gear, I sort of like put that workflow in, into what I'm doing. Yeah, because because it's based on the same principles as mm. the Red Komodo, mm. ain't it? The yeah. BJ camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I I wasn't the, the, the like the DSLR style cameras, I don't I tend to not rig them. I have a cage mm. and I'll probably use a monitor if 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 one if, if need be, yeah. but I've sort of like, where when I first got into filmmaking, I was rigging the fuck out of cameras. Yeah, so yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Franking rigs. Yeah, yeah, things. yeah. Do, but, but that again, do you think that was more so to impress the customer rather than what you actually need it to do? Yes and no. I think it's more to, to, to impress me because you do that and the first thing you do is take a, send a photo of your rig yeah, in, of course. In, in 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 a forum or on a Facebook. Yeah, yeah, group. yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it's. I think it's more about us than it is what you're. What yeah. You know what I mean, what you're doing for the client. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me? Yeah. So um, yeah, it's it, it's a it's just a thing where, um, but but it it, it it just got in the way, and sometimes your rig was like three times the height of of your camera. Yeah. So when me and you did um, Amit's video. I remember that those rigs because I remember mine was stacked up like yeah, high, yeah, yeah, high. Yeah. Like, and because we were in a car, yeah, now, we were limited to how bit difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just I, I think with me now, um, it's just about a cage. Yeah, because I like the the bigger. Uh, the, I mean, the extra weight and the, and, yeah. and and it feels better in hand. Um, but for me, it's just an ND filter. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe, maybe a mic, um, maybe a mic. Sometimes not. Depending, depending, depending if I'm filming um, anything that requires me having a mic. Mm. To be honest, you know what I mean? Because a lot of the time I'm getting the audio. I'm recording. Say if I'm doing an event, I'm getting the audio from the from the, um, the sound guys. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And another sync that in in in. Post. But you know what? They're not always reliable. Because I I did that recently feed it straight into the desk and, and on my part it was partly my mistake because I didn't even check I didn't plug the headphones in to check it I just took it on board as you know face value it's going to be cool I got it back now bro it was unusable the load of feedback coming through it and everything I thought shit man yeah I've never had a problem mm. um and and I think one of the issues is whether you're getting a line out or a mic out input like a yeah do you know what I mean yeah, so yeah. um that's the thing you have to be careful of but the, for the majority of the time I've always I've always been kind of like I've never had an issue one time I think I had an issue and that's when I when I was in Jamaica and I um was recording like a dead yard right, you know right. What I mean and it's a and it's a band but and I had a little and I had my little handheld recorder mm. and I just left it on the speaker but I think the right. the sound was overpowered the yeah. mic as was it just bare to, bass yeah, yeah well it, yeah. it was just distortion yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just distortion it was on you yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. Uh, but luckily enough on that time it did happen um 
I, I always rig up the cameras with mics on top of them as a backup. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, especially with audio, like, um, if you've got a two, three camera set up, footage is salvageable. Like, if something happens with one, you still got two other cameras. But with audio, you only got, like, mm. one yeah, source. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if you always got, a, you know, your mics rigged up to your cameras, yeah. you're sort of covered there, which that saved me on that job yeah. that I did. Yeah, which, even though audio is a massive deal, a lot of the time, clients don't necessarily. I just say if you a lot if you're doing like events, and it depends on the event. I always yeah. get good audio, but yeah. I, I've seen um, maybe because I'm probably more ex more expensive than than some of the guys. But if they don't come back to me and they go with somebody else, those guys are using just the audio in camera, yeah, and the clients don't seem to really... They don't get it until it's already happened. And then that's when they come back and they're like, oh, you know what, yeah. I I, I got this guy in before. Um, It was shit. It was rubbish. It was this and that. And then you sort of stand in there like, well, this is the reason why I charge what I do. It's not just me being, being a twat about it. It's just that because I've invested the time and the money in my equipment to give you the best quality that I possibly can. Yeah. And then th that's the difference where it comes in with the price as well. A, a client always wants a lot for very little, that they, they want the best, they see something on TV and they think, yeah, I want that. And then you give them the price and then they don't understand what's involved to achieve what their their vision is. Yeah. And um, yeah, it can be difficult sometimes. Some clients get it straight away, some clients don't. Um, but yeah, it's just sort of finding that middle ground for you and the client to be happy on both sides. Yeah, yeah. And it, keeping on the audio, like one of the one of the the things I purchased last year was the Zoom F three. Right. So um which introduced me to thirty two bit flow. We, yeah. we we're filming on it now. Yeah, um, I was just looking at it. I've yeah. I've not seen one of them and then when you said about a thirty two bit, I was like, okay, that's because I've I've heard about it, but I've not really dived into the world of the thirty two bit floating. Yet. Yes, I th I think I will do a little um behind the scenes regarding because I'm I am gonna record some orchestral um stuff and some steel pan stuff. Yeah. And I'm gonna um because I've got the road video my ex. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, that came yeah. out a few years ago. Is like a if have you used it much? I've though? used it and and like like for a stereo mic, it's I think it's one of the best out there. Right, right. But because you can use because it's got XLR out, yes, you can record externally and internally and internally to into, your to your yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can it, go out through the 3.5 mm And come jack into your camera. And go into the, yeah, and, yeah, and, and yeah, go into yeah. the recorder. So I'm gonna do a little bit of, little bit of test, some some tests mm. um, with that. So yeah, that should be interesting. But the fact that you don't have to worry about, I, you know, I, I think you do really still have to worry about levels in terms of um, the ambient noise, because you've got to assume that if you record something too low so if we're whispering whispering now mm. when we bring it up in post we're going to be bringing up the room room noise I think, yeah i think you, that's that's unavoidable yeah. but it's like but you're not bringing up like hiss yeah that's the difference between the flow and just a normal yeah yeah and it's yeah, and it's yeah. mad and um and and no matter how loud um i think i think that you're limited by your mic, you right. know what I mean? so so you can overload your mic, but you can't overload the actual thirty-two, like the right, the, the, the right, codec. Right. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean, yeah, if, that, yeah. if that's the right word um, for it. Yeah, so, it, yeah, it's a great time to be alive at the minute with all the technology. Yo, you know, cause, trust me, because when I first started, I think my first ever camera was the Canon Rebel. I think it was the Rebel Two. Yeah, yeah, same. I think I got a Rebel. Rebel 2, Rebel 3. Was that yeah. the 600? 600 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what the, I got. The Rebel yeah, 2. Yeah. I don't know why they called it the Rebel because it was just the same as the 600D. Yeah, but, but it's, I, it's the... I think it's, it depends on... Because you can get that green lantern on the Rebel. Magic lantern. Magic yeah, lantern yeah, on Rebel, yeah, which yeah. you couldn't do on the on the 600. Yeah, you can. You can you, could you get yeah, that on the 600? Yeah, you could do it 600? on... Because you had the 500, the 550. The 600 was, when, was, yeah. was the one I got. Yeah, yeah. Um... 
the and then yeah, but they, they all are and like yeah. So Magic Lantern was yeah. I I had that on my on my camera for the um for the video features. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was <sighs> that hack there is nuts. Yeah, I don't know why they don't apply that to cameras now because I know that cameras now like especially with the technology and all these cameras they've got that ability to open up something else and if you think about it you know a lot of manufacturers probably not gonna like this but a lot of the internals are exactly the same the only thing they're changing is how the chip works how it activates mm. different things I think what the Green Lantern done is it it opened up that magic chip and yeah, magic lantern, <laughs> green lantern. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like it's a DJ Wu yeah, yeah. mixtape or something. <laughs> it was green lantern, yeah, weren't yeah, it? Yeah, the magic lantern, green yeah, lantern. Yeah. The um, was it? Is it is green lantern? DJ Wu No, but it's what the, the super green hero. lantern. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it DC green... or Marvel Green Lantern? I think I think it's DC. DC yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> Green Lantern. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, but yeah, magic. Yeah, magic lantern. Yeah, not yeah. and. Panasonic it's, had a hack um, for the GH2. Um, but I think I the remember. guy, I'm sure it, I'm sure the, the hack was by, um, what's his name? He's a Panasonic um, sort of like ambassador now. Nick something Wood. Driftwood. Wow, Nick okay. Driftwood. I'm sure he, his was one of the hacks, if I remember rightly. But he works with Panasonic, so so now there's no hacks. There's no if, hacks. if he weren't working for Panasonic, I guarantee you there'll be a hack for like these DH5, yeah, G8, yeah. G8, G8, yeah, you know what I yeah. Mean? And I think Panasonic does drip feed there I, I, as much as mm. they give you. I, I if Magic, if, if, if what Magic Lantern can do, because one of the cameras that they've hacked isn't even a video camera, I can't remember. Is it a it's a full frame camera? Um. But it's not even a video camera. Pitch camera. And 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 I'm sure it can it can record 24 frames per second. I can't I can't remember what the um, yeah cause, yeah because that was that that was in the notes. Do you know what I mean? But um yeah the, um you got a guy he's made um what's his name? He's made like a little a little red out of the Canon M. The common and and what and it shoots raw because they shoot oh, raw. Okay, okay, okay. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm sure it shoots. It's a it's a 1080p camera, but I'm sure it shoots a higher resolution raw. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. a lot of those a lot of those cameras are shooting higher res, like with the Magic Lantern hack. Yeah, yeah. Are shooting um, yeah. raw, and not only that, they've they it's a, it's a reliable hack. Yeah, it, it's a it, it is a hack nonetheless. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. it's still. Um, like if they can do that, Panasonic should be able to do magical things. Yeah, of course the, the they GH5. can. They, they can yeah. definitely, definitely. Because look at even um, you know the GH five. Mm. Uh, I remember when you first got that, and then I got it, and you was like, "Yeah, I, I like shooting in log." And I was like, "I ain't got log on mine." And you was like, "Yeah, you have to buy yeah, it." Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that just goes to show that the capabilities were already in there. It's just that they've no. not that they're not opened them up. No, my GH. The was first it the GH five? Or was it GH4 that you had to buy the... No, the GH4, the, the S... there was a hack. There was, right, so the GH4, there was um, using the the Panasonic app. Yeah. You could um, select V-Log and leave it. And then yeah. you, you just have it, but then you couldn't upgrade it. They put they put an update right. in it. Yeah, sorry, it's yeah, V-Log. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, saying yeah. S-Log. I'm, st yeah, I'm stuck yeah, in the yeah, Sony yeah, world yeah, now, man. Yeah, I put, sorry, Panasonic. Yeah, forgot the, about that, that. that, that, that yeah. yeah, they, they, they kind of like left a back door open, so that didn't get up. I think, I can't remember what um, firmware that was, but that didn't get, that never got up, updated. Right. I think it got updated before I sold it. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, the, uh, in terms of even, even like the BGH1, I think Panasonic's definitely not done enough um, to make, to make it more kind of like user friendly. Mm. Um, the even the, the GH6, so the old Vericam um, shoots can shoot twelve bit four four four. Um, with the Panasonic um is AVC Ultra codec. Do you know what I mean? 
and it's well within the, the capabilities of the of the of GH probably yeah. within the capabilities of the GH five as well. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so, so Panasonic gave us ProRes RAW with the GH six, but what they should have done is is kept their ultra codecs because, yeah. because they were they were usable. You the, that was fine for yeah. editing. That and, was but perfect. They, but they should have added a twelve bit. If if, if we can't get internal raw, yeah, because yeah, of the yeah, red, yeah, because of the red pattern. If we can't get internal raw, they should have gave us um four four yeah. four twelve bit. I totally agree. But but going back to earlier when you're saying they just drip feed, that's mm. that's what they do for marketing. Yeah. Like give it a couple years, two, three years, they'll probably bring out the G H seven or they might change the name of it or whatever and it may have the twelve bit internal mm, because yeah. I guarantee you these cameras that you that are here now from Panasonic have got the capabilities of doing the twelve bit yeah. internal but they've just not added it because it's you know it's all part of the marketing ain't yeah, it? Yeah they they could have given us that like I mean a compressed four 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 twelve bit codec would have been much more appealing for me anyway to a raw codec just based on the fact that if you want to shoot raw with any of these cameras, you're sort of like boxed into one editing one, software. That's it. So if you want B raw, you have to use Resolve, Resolve and if you yeah. want ProRes raw, you yeah. have to use um, Final, Cut. Final Cut. Yeah. And I always like one of the first pieces of equipment I bought when I first got into filmmaking was um, or two pieces was light meter and a color meter. Yes, Do you know what I mean. So m my shit was at least mathematically right yes. in the camera. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean. So um, I've and I've and I've always shot that way. I've always shot like, I guess you no, know, the, the workflow is not that much different to how you'd shoot on film. Yeah, Do you know what I mean. So I'm I'm not really filming with the intention of unless that's going to be the intention of 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 doing a lot more in post. And even then, that's the intention I would shoot with as opposed to like um, having to like, re not reset, like change around your white balance, yes. ISO, yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing, yeah, in, like in post. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that just doesn't really, not that you just, I guess, I guess the idea of it is, is, is you know I mean, I like the idea of it, but I kind of like, yeah, if, if if it ain't right in real life, then you're gonna be doing a lot of work mm. later on. Yeah, yeah. In in the edits, and and again, that comes with experience and in, in doing it. And I remember one thing when I first started with the Canon Rebel, like I was just picked up the camera and I was shooting. I weren't thinking about lighting. I weren't thinking about the ISO with the grain and everything. And I think, if I'm gonna be honest, I think it was only until I met you that I learned quite a lot about the basics of filmmaking in terms of like how important lighting is and things like that. And then when I started applying that, I noticed the difference. Mm. So, you know, big ups for that because from there, I think I went from the Canon Rebel T2i and had the, it's a weird camera, but the Olympus, remember the Olympus camera? Yeah, yeah, I've still yeah, got yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark, Two, and I've still got that camera, yeah. and it still works to this yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. In 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 work forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like I say, and it was then only when I got that camera because that's my four thirds that I started getting into the world of more lenses in um the lighting and stuff. And another thing I noticed was the price. Yeah. Because obviously I was shooting with the Canon Rebel with just couple lenses, and it was costing like a couple hundred pounds. And then obviously when you start getting real serious about it, the money gets real serious yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? And, and, and yeah, it was um, it was a big wake up call. And I think that's when it sort of went from a hobby to making a living from mm. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, So yeah, yeah, it was a big, it was a big step up that was for me. So the Sony's, the um the lenses you say was a big purchase. What else was a big purchase? Um, you, you got um your MacBook. Was that I last did. Year? Yeah. Yeah, I got that last last well, the beginning of last year. Um again, it you know, anyone who's thinking of getting anything, just spend a few hours on research. Like like me, I probably do it extensively before I purchase anything. Like I probably do about 
12 hours on each product mm. before I even think of getting it. And I was um, contemplating between the MacBook Air because obviously I had the M1 chip and the MacBook Pro. Now there's about a 1,500 pounds difference between those two. Um, and at the time I thought, you know what? I'll get the MacBook Air. If it's shit, then I'll just send it back and then save up a bit of money and get the MacBook Pro. When I got the MacBook Air, I, I was blown away with <laughs> with what it can do. For a MacBook Air, like, it's amazing. The only complaint I'd have about it is there's only two USB-C ports. Mm. Um, but other than that, like, it's my, it's in my bag right over there. It's got all my bits on there, plug my external hard drive in, and literally, yeah, it's it's never failed now. I've got a 2016, 20, no, 2017 MacBook Pro. Um, maxed out, I think I just didn't max out the, but like the CPU, GPU is maxed mm. out. And I think I got like a terabyte hard drive, if I remember correctly, or maybe just the 512, I can't remember. Um, so the MacBook is, is due to be updated. So the plan is to then give the kids the older iMac. They had the, they had the one before, so, so they always get the older equipment and then put the MacBook and just the monitor because I'm going to be going... So we've got, we've got two stations here. Mm -hmm. So one of them's audio and one of them's um, primarily video. Right. So um, the audio is just going to be a thing where... If you do audio and you come in and do some work, you can just, do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. going to be more an, an open station yeah, yeah, yeah. as opposed to... The, Everything mixed in. Yeah, yeah, once. yeah. So um, I'll bring my older MacBook because that MacBook is, I think is a bit of, it's, it's a better spec, but it, it's it's more modern. So I'm still getting updates yeah, for yeah, that yeah. one. So I'll bring that into the studio and just get myself. I am looking at um, either an M1 MacBook Pro or an M2 MacBook Pro 14 inch mm. um, for traveling, for traveling, that kind of thing. And keep that at home where I keep the um, the MacBook now. But I do the majority of the work on the iMac. And that's, um, that's kind of like, in terms of like what I'm looking forward to probably next year, this year I should say is is a new iMac, whether that comes or not, yeah, is a whole other matter. But we'll we'll, we'll get it's, we'll get we'll get to well when it does come. Yeah, but we'll get to <laughs> what we what we're gonna look forward to and what technology or gear it, 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 like appealed to you most last year. The um the DJI uh what was it called? It was like the, the all mic. in one thing. No, no, the handheld thing. It the like, not the Ronin. Was it DJI the, Ronin? Is it the DJI where it's all in? Yeah, yeah. It, it's got like the gimbal and it does like the chicken head thing. Like, oh no! You know, it yes, weren't the Ronin. Not the Ronin. Do you know um, what I'm on about? Yeah, I know what you're on about. The camera. Yeah, the camera yeah, 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 yeah. That blue. I remember you was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I was close. I was close yeah. to because I think at the time that's when I was floating between jumping over to Sona and then that dropped and I was like, boy. But then again. For me and what I do, you know, for um, practicability, it it weren't good for me at the time because obviously that was aimed at Let like me see for, what that's called. Like for you know, it's one I'm on about. Yeah, I yeah, know exactly what you're yeah, on about. Yeah, yeah. But but then afterwards, I was glad I went with the Sony A7S3 because I started hearing a f not bad things about it, but. Obviously, it's only good for like certain yeah I, I, settings. It, you know it, what I mean? It did look and, like a bit like I wouldn't say it was a one trick. No, no, definitely not. I think they've just got a lot of work to do with that because the um, the lens compatibility as well w yeah, was not that well, great. I don't understand why they you didn't make that a be, Micro Four Thirds camera. They should have done because they've got the, the old the, the weight of the lenses. You was limited to how much yeah, weight right, you can I have know. on there with the lenses, and, and and I think that's another thing that put me off it as well. Um, really. Was just the limitations with the lenses as well. Yeah, it is a Ronin DJI was it the Ronin, Ronin yeah, 4D. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's the one. Yeah, it just for me it just looked cumbersome 
Yeah. I like the idea how it was all in one. So in my head, when, yeah. when I first seen it, I'm thinking, this is perfect. You just pull it out the bag, turn it on, and that's it. It's good to go. You know what I yeah. mean? No, no pissing around or anything. Yeah. But then again, this is where my extensive looking into things before I buy it comes yeah. into play because the more I looked into it and the more I thought about it in everyday situations, it, it weren't going to be good for me. Yeah, why they didn't make that a micro four third? I yeah. think micro four thirds lenses would have been perfect. That would have worked good for that for because that, for they're that not camera. they're not heavy. In, yeah. in there's a lot of micro four yeah, third yeah, lenses yeah, out yeah. there. You can get you yeah, know yeah, it'll work well yeah, with it. I think they missed a the trick. No. And, and I and I think that's that's the thing um, because I wanted to um, in my notes. That's one of the things I wanted to talk about. The whole. Um, micro four thirds versus full f full frame thing. Yeah. Because you don't really get the same criticisms when it comes to APS-C, like Super 35 sensors. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Even though you kind of, um, even though you, you, you've, you've kind of got the same sort of drawbacks, yeah, it, it, it's, 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 you know what I mean? Lenses are, are longer. Yeah. There's a crop. It's not as good as low light. Yeah. There's a crop in. I mean, there's the depth yeah. of field. Um, sort I, of and light. I think you are right. There is a lot of criticism. That there's more criticism with the APS-C rather than the Mark Four Thirds. In less, less criticism of the of I've, the APS-C. I've been seeing a lot more of the, with the APS-C. APS I, I have not because I think Sony's. Um, the APS-C Sony sensors get love. The new um, F30, because you've you got FX3 and you've got an FX30. The FX30 is the cheaper version. It's the cheaper version. It's the little brother to yeah, the yeah, FX3, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, getting yeah. mad love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And even the Blackmagic... Um, 6K Pro. 6K Pro. You know what? I was going to jump onto that because that was another camera that mm. I was looking at when I was um, going to switch my camera up mm. and yeah that was definitely on the list because when i was looking into it um because another thing about sony jumping over to their system is i like the flexibility of being able to use aps-c lenses mm. on full frame on a full frame body but you always have to take into a factor so you know for instance if i wanted a 24 mil on a full frame camera and i'm thinking right for budget I'm going to get an APS-C lens, which I've seen the Zars ones mm. that they do in a 16 mm. mil, which is equivalent to on full frame, a 24 mil. Yeah, I think that's mm. right. So 16 mil on APS-C is 24 mil on a full frame. Mm. And um, yeah, that's one thing that I was looking at and I thought that's pretty flexible because like I say, if you're on a budget, um, Again, you just have to do the maths on it, and then just know your lenses mm. for what for what sort of things you're going yeah, for. Well, it's it's, what, it, it's your look, isn't it? It's your look. It's your framing. It's what you want in focus. What you want out of focus. How much do you want out of focus? Yeah, you know what I mean. So, if you're the director, or if you're working for a director, if he if he if he sort of like he tells you his vision, and you just capture that vision to the best of your ability. Mm. You know what I mean, and. A lot of the time, it's just just not overthinking yeah. um, the process, not yeah. overthinking your lighting. Not um, I've always worked from the philosophy of w anywhere you go, light primarily always comes from one direction. Yes, do you know what I mean? Either yeah. from the window, from the sun, yeah. whatever. It's all from a bulb. Yeah, it's it's always primarily coming from one direction. Now, um, so I, I shoot sort of like, or I try to shoot, or I like to shoot how, according to how light works. Yes. As yeah. opposed to me making. Yeah. I, but, I, I but, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know how to explain it because we, um, I did, I did like, me and you have been to university. We've done like creative, creative, um, degrees and, um, one of the times we had to reproduce a, a painting. You had to, re I mean, so you got a fa you found a famous pa painting and you had to reproduce it, like, mm -hmm. yeah, it, like in, in your video in camera or 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 a photograph. And um, 
to the way everybody was approached, it was just so overcomplicated. Yeah. And when you looked at the the painting, Simple. you could see that there was this one light source yeah, and it yeah. was coming from one direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And that and that was it. While yeah. everyone was sitting by, I just went over, put the put a light, put the light up, like where it, I think it was like where it was now. It's job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stood yeah, the yeah, yeah. underneath, underneath yeah. the light. Job done. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I think we do sort of like overthink and overcomplicate, and it's like we have to we have to be of the belief that if it's not taking ages if it's not complicated if it's not professional it's it, not going to I mean yeah yeah if it's not expensive yeah, it's yeah. not professional yeah yeah you know what's funny about you saying that because I've I've done setups where I've spent ages setting up like and yeah reflectors mm. this and that in the shot don't look that good. Yeah. And there's been other times where it's been a running gun thing and I just think quick off mm. the mark. I'm like, well, right, okay, we're gonna have one one light there and then we just go have a little hair light there, bouncing off the bat, bam, job done, set up, roll. Mm. And it looked amazing. And I was like, wow. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, I think you're right in saying sometimes if you overthink it, you can overcomplicate yeah. it and then more problems happen. Yeah, yeah. With, like, so like what that. you call a pragmatic accident. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Where some things just happen, but it just works out, it, it, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's happened a lot of times actually, yeah. where it's like, you know, um, you know, when you just put on the spot and you're on your toes, you're like, right, running out of time, we'll just go boom, 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 boom. And then, it works out a lot better than you know you originally planned. And yeah, um, I, I think that comes to who you're working with as well, because I've, I've I've worked with a lot of people um, who are finicky on certain things, and I'm standing there and I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna kick back and let you do your thing because if I say what I think, it's gonna go back and forth, and we're just gonna stand there mm. like. We'll, we'll be there going backwards and forth for, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes and people are still will be sitting around like, what the hell's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. Sort of thing. And, you know, I think as well, it's it's about the people you're working with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, as well, yeah. Um, which is re yeah. really important because cause if you're not clicking with the people you're working with, um, it's not going to work and it, it's going to end up in a shambles. Yeah, yeah. a lot of the time, he, he, they don't know because when you're on a set and there's professional actors, yeah, the majority of the time they're they're waiting. Yeah. yeah, they're either on their phone or whatever. Yeah, while yeah. them motherfuckers are out there just, running just around. fucking around with yeah, lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But and and when you're working with amateurs, you'll get the. It's even more. <sighs> Or yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And they want to question yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. one of the things I think we we forget to do is educate the client and educate the people around you. That's about, really about important. The process. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that is really important. Um, you know, because a lot of the time, uh, you know, I've I've put my hands up to it myself. I've gone into a, a job and then automatically think that they know what's happening and what the process of mm. it is. And and again, like you say, a lot of time they just stand around like, oh, what time are we gonna be getting set up, this and that. And that's, you know, on my part for not um, getting a proper program together for them. It, and it is all a lo learning process over the years. Like, you know, this is shit that they can't teach you in uni mm. is the, you know, the real everyday life situation that you have to deal with clients because not one client is ever the same as the last one. Mm. Um, and you know, I, that's another mistake that I made thinking that every client's the same, no. where, where you know, that every client's totally different yeah. and, and you do have to break it down to them. And then once you do break it down, it makes everyone's process a bit easier as well. Yeah.